Hey, White Rock K85. Yes, the Jeep is headed, uh, what direction? South. So we know we're not going to the cabin. Yeah, it's uh, North Carolina is our destination, Rocky Mount and Dog Ridge Farm for our North Carolina deer camp, outfitter style. Uh, we'll be down there with uh, my brother and uh, Marcus Aurelius and of course Sean. And we're gonna have a, have a great time as always. Weather's gonna be a tad on the warm side. It's been cold as anything as far as relatively cold here. Even had frost on the lawn yesterday, but now we're gonna have high 70s in the afternoon. It's not great, but uh, yeah, that's okay. We'll make the best of it. The first year that uh, I went down, we had those high temps. And uh, if you remember, we all did fairly well that year. This time, uh, Royal Farms coffee. I think this is the Jamaican coffee or Jamaican blue or something like that. Yeah, I think it is. And we'll just uh, sit back on, this is a nice 24 ounce, so this will get me some miles. So I've got uh, 300 miles to drive or so. Uh, we'll get there and uh, get yourself a coffee, get yourself a snack, and hope you enjoy. Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel. Uh, a series of bridges and tunnels that get us over from Virginia down into Virginia, in the Norfolk area. And, uh, we got about three and a half hours down, and we got about another two and a half to go. So we just went through Delaware, Maryland, and the Eastern Shore, Virginia areas, and now, uh, now on the mainland of Virginia, and then we'll slide down into North Carolina soon. So, a little, a little bit more to go. Hey, hey, did you get that snack yet? If not, go ahead and get it. I just arrived here at Dog Ridge Farms, so let's see if my brother has rolled in yet, and then Sean will be coming in a little bit later. So I'll go see if I can hook up with Andrew and see what our accommodations are going to be like this year. So we'll be seeing that in just a minute. It's a good ride, six hours, and uh, well, it's actually less at five minutes and 53 minutes in case you care. Now, let me go see if I can find the guys. Had a good dinner at uh, Lou Retta's American Table here, and uh, that was not bad at all. I recommend you. You might want to stop in here. A little silhouetted against the nice sundown. Uh, we're heading down to the small lodge now, and there are going to be some other guys in there tonight, guys that we do not know. So uh, this will be it for sort of the day one, or the, the preparation for day one maybe starts tomorrow. But I'm not, I don't want to show them. I don't want to invade any of their privacy, don't know them or anything like that. So uh, we're just going to go back, uh, get settled in a little bit, have a beer or so, and probably get to bed early. So you'll be seeing me when the sun's about like this tomorrow morning. It's the first morning here, and there is Mark and Sean in the background. Looking forward to a good morning as always. So I'm not sure where Thomas is going to take us, and we'll, we'll find out soon and get to those blinds. Our first morning in the stand, uh, North Carolina hunt. It's 6 a.m. right now. And shooting time is about 6.58. So I got a good 58 minutes just to kick back and let the area settle down for me walking in. John's over to my left over here. My brother and another gentleman are across the road. So we're in the Pine Tops area of uh, North Carolina right now. So let's get quiet, get this light off. Well, it's about 7.50 and I uh, got a text from my brother said that uh, he shot at a buck. He thinks he got it. He's going to go down and check it. So first morning, North Carolina, we'll see what happens over there. Uh, we're staying in until about 930. So we still, we still got a couple hours before we'll find out for sure and get some pics or whatever. But uh, that's great for him. And uh, the, Sean and I will uh, continue to keep a look at. I have not seen anything yet this morning. A couple squirrels. I'm hearing, hearing some turkeys off in the, to my left here, probably between Sean and I, and there's supposed to be a nice pond next to us. I think I'm hearing some ducks going in and out of that too. Just got this pick from my brother. So he got a five point this morning at, uh, was that 7.30ish, 7.28, something like that, or 7.25. So nice opening morning for him. Not bad out here this morning. Temps, 
back low 50s which is nice going to get up warm this afternoon but uh, for now pretty nice glad I have the extra jacket and shirt on it's the blind I was in it's it's big uh, it's metal angle iron uh, tin roof and then plastic on the sides um, they're pretty good for fitting people in you got a father son team or grandpa and that or daughter dad and daughter or whatever and uh, you can fit in there pretty nice but uh, I can't quite stand up in it and uh, it, it gets a little uncomfortable after a while I do like uh, the wood ones that Andrew's making now with the he's putting the chairs in there just a little bit more comfortable on that bench there's nothing really to lean against but uh, hey you want to be honest about the, the stance here that's what I'm trying to do but it, it's not a bad stand. Uh, I don't want to make sure I know that. I just prefer the other ones. But, uh, well, we're going to go out see if Thomas is around. Oh, look like I got the Santa beard coming in here. We'll, uh, we'll see if Thomas is uh, picking my brother up and his deer. And uh, we'll go back and we'll take some pics and videos. See if we can find this uh, pond over here where I could thought I heard those ducks splashing this morning. That was early. That was, that was early. There's the pond right over this crest here. I'm not sure what that crop is. Maybe Thomas knows. And uh, I think I see an orange shadow of Sean walking out. And I may be in. A, I may have been in that stand uh, a couple of years ago, and I think I saw turkeys back in there the first morning. So that was a, that's a possibility. If he said he goes in there and then he looks off to the right, and that was the stand. And it's starting to warm up now. I mean, I was, my watch said 55. Uh, and I, that's on my backpack, so it's not against me or anything. But I can tell it's warming up now. And it's going to be a smoker this afternoon. But we'll make do. And hey, we got one in the bag already. And uh, just got a text. My brother said a nice big four-pointer walk by. Now, he's not eligible to get the four. He has to get a six or better now that he's taken one buck. So, uh, but it's nice to know that you're, you're seeing bucks. And Sean said he had a bunch of yearlings around him all morning. Thomas is heading in with a four-wheeler. We're, we're behind him on foot. Uh, we'll see what's going on back here. I was going to reach. Outside the mini lodge, flying over the cotton fields here in North Carolina is ranked sixth nationally in the production of cotton. Now this was from a while back, but about 5% of the U.S. cotton production. Most of the cotton that is produced in North Carolina is grown in the coastal plain region that we were in. About 3% of the acres located in the southern Piedmont region have cotton growing on them. We're taking a look at the shooting bench, the elevated shooting bench. And if we spin here, it's down towards a couple targets that are available down there. If you need to sight your gun in after a plane ride or a long ride or maybe a, a bump where you just want to check it, make sure it's right.
Here's the main lodge and that's the, uh, the dining hall and a couple other rooms in there. And of course the main Doddridge farm. If you're coming here, this is what you look for to pull in the driveway here, all the red roofs. And uh, that'll be your destination, Doddridge Farms. Outfitters, Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. And here's our mini lodge that uh, Sean, Mark, and I were staying at. Walking in in the afternoon, uh, it's a little warm. You knew it was going to be warm. And this is, oh, bug, uh, Black Creek. You've heard of me talking about Black Creek before down here. So uh, I think my brother's going to head over to the old polder guy stand there in the corner, right over that way. He was in there last year. And I'm going to walk down here a bit and get on this power line over here. I've been here before and seen a lot of deer down in there area so it should be inter very interesting well when you're having your next jar of mr peanuts this is how they turn them over and dry them they leave them dry out here for a bit and then come and pick them up and in the meantime some some deer may want to eat some I said it should be an interesting evening. Us and Mr. Peanut. Right along the power line here. And uh, out into the peanut field. And we'll see if anything is crossing in here because it doesn't want to be seen out in the field. Which is always a good possibility. Those bugs, they know how to find me, don't they? That's for sure. About uh, 15 more minutes of uh, shooting time left, but it's getting kind of dim in here. So, probably going to wait five or seven minutes, make my way over so I can see out in that field just in case there's something out there. Possibly, but I know I won't be disturbing those guys because uh, I'm far enough away. So uh, nothing this evening. Didn't hear from the other guys. Heard a couple shots, but they were far off, and it really sounded like 30-30 caliber to me. It was that uh, one of that pop sound and uh, a crack of a rifle. So, uh, we'll go out to the edge, and I will meet our guide. We have somebody different. His name is Thomas again. It's a different guy. But, uh, looking forward to a little Miss Trudy dinner tonight. As always, look forward to some of her meals when we get back, that's for sure. I'll start walking up in a, in a couple minutes back towards the... where they're going to pick, pick us up at. So, I will uh, be there in a bit. And I think I hear the coyotes howling in the background. And uh, always a nice sunset in this area. This is Black Creek, and uh, it's a it's a beautiful, beautiful farm. We'll get them next time, Andrew. There you go. Yeah. We'll get, food looks on, good. We get you. Huh? Good to see you. Food looks good. Yes, yeah, sure it does. We can count on that every yeah. day. Yep, Miss Trudy always does a good job back here. Right. This is the uh, the living room of the the mini lodge that we're in, and I know you didn't get to really see too much of this last year, but uh, comfortable. It's got uh, you know two couches uh, or a couch, two love seats. I think that's a pullout over there too, if you really needed it. But, uh, the, the, everybody else is gone. And, uh, I think I just may move into the, one of these here. Just uh, the guys won't be waking up for me snoring on them. Well, second morning. So Marcus got one, so he's looking for a six point or better. And uh, Sean and I are looking for a deer. <laughs> Anything. Any <a> deer. <laughs> Anything. Anything goes. Uh, Facing up a little bit, not a bad angle, or not a good angle, but uh, oh, you look powerful. Out, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Citizen Kane. Yeah. Uh, we'll jump in that truck in just a minute. I think it makes my head look like really small. My body look like 
humongous. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's not powerful. No. <laughs> uh-uh. I'm more like, oh, I can't try Dorky. this. Yeah. yeah. Pretty good. <laughs> try again here. All uh, right, second morning, and uh, Sean and I were looking for a good deer. Uh, I'm hoping to actually see a deer. But uh, they all, every, everybody else has, so it's just my turn to come around and I have to see something. Second morning, and in the stand here, just getting shooting light now. So we'll see what happens this morning. Hoping to hear a couple shots, maybe one by myself and a couple of the other guys. Well, good morning. Day two of the hunt. This is Mark here. I'm in my tree stand. I'm in a clear cut. So as you can see, there's no tall timber. Uh, this t this um, regrowth is a, a year or so old. There's one of my shooting lanes down here in front of me. And as I rotate around to the east, there is a second shooting lane. As you can tell, it's uh, very foggy this morning. Uh, the sun is just coming up. It's about 7.05 right now. See if a buck is going to be trailing them. So keep an eye on them. Day two. Watching those same five deer straight down here, a shooting lane. They're at the end of it, feeding, and just waiting to see maybe if a buck will show. Uh, thought about taking the bigger doe a few times, but uh, I'd still rather get a buck first. Really looking for just one deer. I'd like to see if I get a buck, and maybe if it was tomorrow morning, maybe I would shoot, but. Uh, for now, I'm gonna keep watching them to see maybe if uh, they will attract a buck in. Cause it's it's pre-rut down here right now, but it doesn't mean he couldn't get uh, somebody roaming around it and looking. Well, good morning again. Uh, it's about 7:35, about a half hour since my original update. Uh, as you can see, the fog is still pretty heavy in the area. Uh, you're viewing the shooting lane uh, down to the south and as we pan around you'll see that shooting lane down to the east the sun's coming up I don't know how easy it's going to be to see down there even if it were a clear day um, with that sun shining in from that direction Well, if you noticed, I took the jacket and vest off. Uh, it starts out cool, 
53 and then it climbs into the you know towards marching towards 80 this afternoon so as soon as that sun comes up it goes from 53 to 63 really quick well had a good morning I uh, saw the five there and then made their way around down the shooting lane I'll show you in a minute and uh, they were feeding down there for a good half hour and I was watching, 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 and uh, hoping a buck was going to trail them or pop in, but none ever showed. And uh, decided to hold off and not take a doe. Now here on the on Dot, Dot Ridge on the Outfitter, two bucks and two does I could take. So I could have taken that, and I still would have been able to take another doe tomorrow if I wanted, and two bucks. So it's my choice, you know, not not to take that one right there. So uh, take a look at the stand, take a look at the area, the shooting lane, and we'll get picked up and uh, get back in the truck. There's the stand. It had nice one of those nice swivel chairs in there, so my back is saying thank you very much, Andrew. So, uh, good stand. The deer came out right over here. We'll see that and uh, watch them and then made their way back. Now let's go down this shoot down this shooting lane here. Right down there. And uh, right down in this shooting lane, right in here. Yeah, it's just waiting, waiting, waiting. But, uh, that's that's okay. Yeah, uh, you know, I'm happy. I'm happy about it. So I'm glad I saw some deer this morning. I know they were the f same five because it was two bigger ones and three smaller ones. So we'll march up towards the, the Jeep. And uh, this morning they came out. Let's see. It was pretty close. You look for a little path. I think it was right up here. And this is thick right through here, but I think they came out right in here. And let's spin around. And of course, stand over there. So not very far at all. This is uh, 35 yards maybe. Came out here, eating right in through here where I walked. So I've got the rubber boots and uh, those mucks. They, they do, they're pretty scent free, so that worked out pretty good. And uh, they were out here. Uh, those of you that are gonna have sweet potatoes on Thanksgiving, uh, this, uh, this may be a, your field here. They were out there eating some of the grass, I guess. They were way out, in the, way out into it too. And uh, I don't see any extra sweet potatoes around, but who knows, there might be a chunk or two. And, uh, I did have a better chance out here. It would have been a lot easier to see him and see what happened. Like I said, chose not to shoot this morning. And they went in right around this, uh, this big tree right here. I'm not sure what kind that is. Uh, is that a hickory? Oh, damn. Yeah, or a tulip. what's on this. I don't know my trees as well enough as I should. But they didn't come over and eat any. And we see right here, the old poison ivy. No, get away. Get away. So I'll walk back to the truck and we'll go see what Miss Trudy's having this morning. That was a good spaghetti dinner last night. Really enjoyed the spaghetti. Two helpings. And uh, man, after that first long day, and uh, that really hit the spot for all of us. Everybody, everybody said the same thing. They really enjoyed it. Here's our uh, sweet potato. So they could have been out there trying to find, see if they could still find one or two of them. I mean, it wasn't hard for me to find it. I'm sure they're better at it. But, uh, I think I see some more in here also. Standing here at the pickup point, and I just had walked up here and uh, Right down this lane, all the way towards the bottom, where you can, right where it ends. So, saw a buck go by. It 
was a it looked like it was a spike with a couple of kickers on it so certainly not a developed deer uh, I did have the I still was loaded at the time uh, would have been a quick snapshot maybe if I had a couple extra seconds to look at it maybe I would have tried to take a shot but uh, uh, from just initially it was since I just saw and I think it was only good on one side uh, so I, I just kind of didn't even think of shooting of either and and it didn't it and it only gave me a few seconds to make that decision and you know I said no and by the time I said that it was just about gone uh, but uh, nice to see a, a buck and this is 930 well I got yeah 936 so it was about five minutes ago uh, so they're still moving at 930 through the woods anyway you know me I gotta take a picture first gotta take a picture Gonna take a picture of you making some more eggs back here, too. Ooh. Ooh, we got <laughs> waffles. Waffles, yeah, sausage, waffles. little bacon eggs. Oh man! I mean, I I mean they have, even think I see some grits over here. Yeah, here we are back at the mini lodge. Mark, Sean, and I we're just having some after breakfast coffee. Sit out here on the porch for a while till we can, unless it gets too hot and it runs us out of here. But uh, during the day on these hunts, from about uh, you know 10:30 after breakfast till about 3:30, you have you know your basic downtime they don't go out in the middle of the day now I don't know if they do that later in the year when things are moving or you can stay in longer or go in earlier but uh, uh, you have some time so you can go into town you can go find your favorite barbecue place in North Carolina if you eat a real light breakfast and, and go get some lunch and be back for the afternoon hunt so there's plenty of things to do listen to the trucks go by on the highway next to us but uh, have some coffee and uh, one of those uh, leaf cigars again, but this is the Sumatra. I'll go, I'm going to go ahead and have that and then uh, change all my clothes, take a shower, and I'll be ready for this afternoon's hunt. So just a little downtime and uh, we'll, uh, we'll have a cigar, talk some bit, visit with my brother here. We don't get to do that too often, so it's nice to do. And, of course, Sean here because he's... Uh, as you know, out of state now, so he's got a he flew in and flew in from Salt Lake City to Denver to here. And then when he goes back, he could be somewhere else. So uh, uh, it's nice to be able to see him and, and catch up with him for a few minutes too. So uh, it's uh, it's sort of a nice uh, family thing and a, and a hunt together. So it's it's great to do it. So I'm going to fire up the Sumatra. I'll let you know how it is halfway through, and uh, then we'll get out the. You know, for this afternoon's hunt. Got the leaf here, I'm about the 50% mark. And this Sumatra is pretty good. I'd say it's got a little bit better than the uh, Corojo. And uh, the Connecticut, of course, mild cigar. So it's, uh, you know, it's the typical Connecticut cigar, nice and mild. If you're, you're a mild cigar smoker, it's the, definitely the Connecticut's for you. This one has definitely got a little bit more body to it. As like getting down a little bit farther, it's, you know, it's coming alive, as they say. And I'm certainly enjoying it. So these Leaf by Oscar, I don't know why I held off so long, just because I really thought it was a gimmick wrapping it in the Leaf instead of just putting it in the normal cellophane. But uh, I'm I'm certainly impressed with the cigars. They smoke good. They burn even. I haven't had any real runners in any of the three that I've had. So a little shout out to Oscar. You know, he, they didn't send me any cigars or anything like that. This is just my opinion. So we're just sitting here, and uh, I'll finish this cigar up, and then change all these clothes take a nice shower and uh, we'll be ready for this afternoon whatever whatever happens this afternoon i'm gonna have to decide when i when and if i want to go ahead and take a dough because i do want to bring some uh bring some home for uh someone and uh another gentleman and uh go ahead and give that one to them so i'd like to certainly get something in the freezer for him and we're him and his family so uh we'll see what happens and uh i that spike just it was a little bit too fast this morning, a little bit too rushed, and it really, I would have rather see that deer develop a little bit, a little bit more. You know, if it, if it started the, the horn out, and then it was a nice big, even if it was a nice big four-pointer, I probably would have gone, but a spike with a couple kickers, eh, let him go to next year, and then he'll be all the better. We'll just sit here a bit, like I said, chatting with uh, with Mark and Sean is, is nice to do, nice to, uh, to just be able to sit down it's a little bit easier in a phone call you talk about whatever you want so uh well we'll get, we'll get down to the nubba here and uh get out hunting later well, 
free swing. Yeah, like, she had here's, a, here's another Thomas. Like this is our other guy. We call him TK. And uh, he's been taking us around for the last day. Uh, we appreciate his uh, hospitality oh, and kindness nice. getting us to the spots. Heading in to my stand in the afternoon. Right over there in the corner. Like a box stand about uh, eight, nine feet off the ground. Now we'll make our way over there. Slip in. Get quiet. Looks like a cornfield here that got harvested. Looks like a cornfield here that got harvested, but uh, looks like some corn coming back up. I could see them eating those green tops in there also. Real good field to look out over. And like I said, there's a little bit of second generation corn coming up, which uh, the deer do love. Well, uh, it's either be there or we have a, a shooting lane down here, this here. And of course you can see this monster shooting lane down this way, which goes forever. I didn't get my rangefinder out yet. It's the kind of stuff you can expect when you come down here to the Dodge Ridge. Uh, like I said before, I don't know how many times, Andrew and the guys, really, really good bunch of guys. Fun trips. So uh, let me let me get quiet and uh, see what happens. I still think I look like Santa. Should I save the f off? Very interesting afternoon uh, here in Tarboro, and uh, deer, uh, five doe, one spike, and uh, I think it's a basket six. It was 200 yards out, and it was uh, in the shooting lane, so I lost the light a lot earlier right now. You can see behind me, the field is lit a little bit, the camera's boosting it, but uh, couldn't see in there but I could just tell the rack was not heavy and I know it was a basket six uh, you know half decent but this is a management farm wanted to do Andrew right with uh, you know a nice deer here not uh, taking out one that would be great next year uh, so uh, probably just gonna look out here in the field for a few more minutes because like I said I kind of lost my uh, shooting lane light here I can barely see anything in there you have to be right here on the edge but uh, the other thing and you probably think oh this guy's BS and you know, I think close to 50 turkeys I saw you saw the ones I had out in the field going across and down this shooting lane they were all roosting up there. They were gathering up there. I counted 20, at least 20 something up there, or more, and they were roosting at the same time I was counting them. And uh, there's 16 out in the field. Uh, so at least 40, and then, you know, turkeys, they can run around, so you might be seeing the same ones, but I'm saying 40 to 45 turkeys, probably. Uh, individuals. So, uh, <laughs> April, be here. Last morning, as the stand is silhouetted with that full moon in the background. Doing our usual sit here, and it's about 8 o'clock, haven't seen anything yet. So we'll just pay attention here for a bit more, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll see what happens here. Just hoping for an actual doe today. It's, you always second guess yourself. Should I have taken one yesterday? Should I have done it yesterday? Well, you know what they say, don't pass up that uh, deer that you'd uh, want to take on the last day, on the first day. So, uh, yeah, you know, sometimes you just do that and think something better is going to come along or you're looking for a buck, etc. But, you know, that's that's honey. That's really honey. That's personal choice. So, uh, like I said, I'll, I'll just keep looking down here I got a couple couple shooting lanes and uh, we'll see what happens till about 9 30. Oh, this guy. Oh, 
this guy popped out a couple minutes ago. I took a good look at him and it's small. And I, it appears to be that he's a button buck. I think I can see buttons on him. So uh, he would be testing that uh, 60 pound and we certainly don't want to take a button buck. That's, there's no sense in that. So uh, maybe he will track something in. Or it's uh, almost going on quarter nine and he's finally moving. I have a feeling. His bed is like right down in here. So me coming in this morning to spook him out unless he he walked through that woods and then he came out and, and popped out on that path there. Just got out, just saw the that one button buck and uh, it was probably approaching that legal weight, but uh, I had no interest in taking a button buck. I'd rather see that grow and be somebody's somebody's something special in years to come. Uh, behind me, the old black hot box. Kind of reminds me of the sweat boxes you see in the prison movies. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's only because it's warm. You see, I changed out of the jacket and vest and got the orange hat on. Uh, but uh, that's just because of now the temp is starting to rise since that sun came up. It's going to be 80 today. But uh, a few days from now, I'll be back down into the 60s and probably 40 in the morning. So uh, being in something like that will be nice. And one thing about that. That will certainly keep the wind off here, that cold November wind for the guys that are late hunting. So, uh, well, I'm going to walk out and meet my brother. And uh, I think he saw a little of this and a little of that this morning also. But nothing, uh, nothing uh, I wanted to take the shot on. So uh, let's go back and see. Uh, I think Sean had a button buck and a doe and a couple things, but no shots there either. Let's head back. Here is last year's buck that I got here. Here's a picture with me and my brother when I harvested it. And uh, uh, one of the guides, Josh here, does those. And uh, I wanted it like a snow camo, white and black, white and gray. And I think he did a real nice job on it. And I'm just gonna mount it right to the hood here and have him ride home, I guess, and see what happens. I won't get too many looks, but uh, no, it's nice. And uh, hopefully I can get my nine back from Delaware from last year and maybe put them together and uh, that'll, that'll make for a, for a nice mount. So uh, I appreciate the work on that, Josh. And uh, that, that was done right here in Doddridge. Uh, didn't go to the taxidermist and just took that year. And uh, hey, that's the average for everything these days or even less because it seems to take more all the time. Last afternoon we walk in. It's a little bit later just because of the temps. I was looking on his uh, thermometer in the car there. He was reading 87. I don't know if it's that hot or not, but it's warm this afternoon. That's why I'm in the t-shirt. But uh, let's get going, get in that stand. All right, last night, one last shot. Or well, maybe not one last shot, hopefully, but at least one last try. Here's the stand. Another stand up that way, nobody's in that. I'll have to range find that, that's what don't come out over there, please. I'm gonna come around here. Last afternoon, Daughtridge Farm, South Fitters, Rocky Mount. Let's see what happens here. And with Sean and my brother Mark also. Let's see if we get some text messages and something happening today. Good evening, everybody. This is Mark. Saturday evening, last opportunity I get to take a doe 
were a buck larger than six points. That buck that I got uh, the first morning of the first day was a five point, so I need to get something six or greater. Right now, I'm in the stand. There's a small harvested field between me and the tree line. Um, the deer are supposed to be coming out of this tree line. I have seen a uh, five pointer in front of me, but again, I had to let him go. He stayed about eight minutes or so and left the property. So I still have about an hour or so before uh, quitting time. That's the uh, geese wishing me a end of North Carolina hunt. As it, uh, it is one minute past shooting time, and I uh, just saw those four: the, the basket six or small six, uh, the three three point, and a fawn and a, and a mama. Uh, so we shall wait for him to pick us up and. Uh, head back to the lodge and Andrew's coming over tonight. Well here it is in the mo nice morning Sunday morning and uh, of course I have to be slurping a coffee here. What uh, what video wouldn't be without that. Now we had a great time here down at Dart Ridge. Uh, Andrew stopped at, by last night uh, at 10 o'clock or so and uh, we talked to him and uh, again he's a great guy to work with and all the guides they do a lot for you. They do a lot behind the scenes that you, you're not seeing. And basically you just worry about getting picked up like you saw us, going out to your spot, seeing what you see, and then uh, making the final decision on what you want to do. Now, you had a great time down here at Dot Ridge. We appreciate the hospitality. If you do hear some rumbling in the background, that's a CSX rail yard that's a few miles away. And it, you hear the clunk of the trains all night long and the whistles and everything so it's a nice kind of nice spot you get that railroad atmosphere down here i do want to give a, a shout out to uh, george's hot rod garage i think he's from north carolina and uh, he's a little bit of a rival he's always gives me heck when i come down here which is great and george i uh, hope all is well with you and yours but uh we'll be wrapping this up in a few minutes take a few p family pictures of us together and uh, you know say our goodbyes and go our separate ways Mark will go back west to North Carolina I'll be going north uh, northeast back to Delaware and Sean will be flying out to uh, Salt Lake City and uh, and then where he will be going after that who knows parts unknown as we say so again great time and if this video is over that can only mean one thing yeah, deer camp, it's right now, it's I think the 29th or 29th of, uh, 28th of October. And uh, deer camp is just a mere three weeks away or four weeks away. Uh, I do think the guys are coming up in mid first week, like Thursday. So I may be up there the first weekend and the first few days myself, and that'll be my solo piece. Then deer camp will swing in. So uh, kind of judge that. I know you asked for the deer camp video, but it probably won't be until, you know, first, uh, almost to the first 10 days of December before I put that one out and then my solo piece after that. Uh, and then kind of kind of shut it down for a few months. So do my fire pit chat and then shut it down. 
so uh, I, again great time uh, there was deer to take I've I could have two does right now in the car but I chose not to take them because I was waiting to see if a buck may come come by and that's your choice down here again the limit is four uh, two bucks two does and if you get a buck the second one has to be at least six points now of course I didn't get any so that didn't matter but that's the rules down here and again great guys talking to Andrew and said most likely I'm gonna be right back here I'll let them know around the beginning of the year they'll let that car go by so you can hear you so this is White Rook 85 for Mark and Sean, again, great time. We had that place all to ourselves, and what a, what a nice family time that was for us. And we will catch you next time in Deer Camp.